Like, are there a lot of church like, in the library? Not really. Like, not the just some questions are kind of deep. Like, at least for exam one, there were like really specific hard questions not that like, you know, are just like, That's a trick question. Okay, so today, We've seen uh, the two big categories of uh, problems that's gonna, uh, that you're going to see on the test for Thursday. So we're just going to practice through them. Um, so today we'll continue to work through uh, parametric particle motion problems. And then tomorrow on Wednesday, uh, we'll just uh, try to finish off the packet and just get some more FRQ practice. And then um, Thursday test. Uh, it'll just be two problems. It'll just be page one will be part of motion, page two will be Taylor series. Okay, so it's and one through. Um, your test grade points will be will be buffered by uh, your test your your review packet homework. So um, that should be that should be good. Uh, I do want to um, go over a problem that I said. That I would go over if I haven't had a chance to do that. Um, it's page six. Page six, yeah. So let me go through that. I could be wrong. Okay. okay, so this is uh, page six. Uh, you guys probably did this for homework already, but um, the second portion feels a little strange, so I want to make sure I went over this with you. So at the very beginning here it says, uh, let the function be f of x equals e to the x over two, write uh, the first four non-zero terms. So just as a reminder, we do have a McLaurin uh, expansion for, uh, or, um, for e to the x, and that's gonna be one plus x plus square root of two. So if I want to find e to the x over 2, I can just replace all my exponents. Sorry, I'll replace all my x's with x over 2. That's right for just for the x terms, right? Because we have this. If we have this to be to build with, then we still want our equation to be a polynomial. So we're just replacing the exponent with x over 2. That you do plus dot 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 not equals, but the idea is that we can also build our general term by using the parent one that we built earlier. Part B uh, says use the result from part A to write the first three non-zero terms and a general term um, of the series expansion about x equals zero for g of x equals e to the x over two minus one. So they're kind of building it. And they could have just asked us to do this at the very beginning, but um, they're building that information up so that we can use the previous parts to help get there. So we'll just take this, subtract one, divide by x.
So that's going to wipe out the ones here. And then we're dividing by X, so all the X, which is basically decreased by one degree. Yeah. Hmm? For the general term, would it be X to the N? Why would it be that? Um. The reason why, okay, yeah, so let me uh, let, let me build this out and talk about why uh, we want to use that um, next to the, um, what I have for this. Yeah, X to N minus one. Okay, so let's see, this becomes one half plus X over two squared times two factorial plus X squared over two cubed times three factorial x cubed over two to the fourth over four factorial so we know that uh, there's a uh, there's a staggered um uh, or delayed uh exponent to uh the denominator right denominator is going to be one higher than the the numerator oh if it's going to return for part yeah. mm -hmm. what did you say would it be x to the n Sorry, now you're right. Um, X to N, sorry, not, not X squared. Thank you. Thanks for that catch. So part B, um, I want to start at one. Um, I know it's going to be X to the N minus one. It's going to be, and then my denominator will just match um, what I need here. So it's going to be two to the N times n Start at one. If I start at zero, I would have to adjust this because um, I want to get a one half to begin with. So if I plug one in, um, I'll get x to the zero power, which is one. Two to the first power is two times one factorial. That's one. That's one half. Plug two in, I'll get x to the two minus one, and then two squared. So this this works pretty well. I mean, we can start at zero. If we start at zero, we just have to play with the exponents, and it may look a little more complicated. But um, you can do a different variation. Just have to make sure that your ends are matched up. Okay, so that's part B. Any questions there? And you don't even have to write the sigma notation. You don't have to. No, you don't have to. Um, Uh, part C says for the function G in part B, which is this right here, um, find G prime of two okay, and use it to show that um, the integral from n to one to infinity, n from one to infinity of n over four to n plus one factorial equals uh, one fourth. So um, let's go ahead and find G prime. And we should get something that um, is going to look something like that. We're trying to make our basic G prime look something like this. I can see to draw. Oh. Oh, uh, say it again. You said the integral, so like. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, derivative. Oh, okay. yeah, derivative. My bad. Uh, so part C, G prime of two. Let me find G prime of X first. We know that first term drops out, and then I'm just going through power rule for each of these terms here.
and I can also do derivative for this here. So it's n minus one x to the n minus two, and then my n's are not going to get impacted. My denominator is just like coefficients. Now this is the same thing as if I were to start at, um, if I were to push the ends out to a different, to uh, the number above it, I can begin to make this look a little bit more like the numerator here. So let's say I just increased n by one, because I can just increase n by one. As long as I do everything um, increase n by one, then uh, I'm just, you know, I can just start at a different value. So if I add n one, sorry, if I add one to all the n's, I get n times x to the n minus one, two to the n plus one times n plus one factorial. Right? These are the same things. We're just starting off at a different number. And the reason this is helpful is because then it's easier to see uh, how this is kind of heading us or taking us towards something that can be in this form. So uh, if I reduce n and n plus one, I can reduce that to be just n in the denominator. Plus one. Okay, well, no, not bad. This is fine. This one here, I can just plug two in for X. If I cancel this out, the two to the n's cancel out, two to the negative one over two to the first power, combine that to be a four. So that's how we get that n over four times n plus one factorial. Okay, so we have something that we can match this with. And we know it's one fourth because if we go back and we found the derivative of G using quotient rule. If we find G prime of two using quotient rule, we get this equal to one fourth and we get that notation. They both were coming to G prime from two different aspects from uh, the Taylor series aspect. McLaurin series aspect as well as from the quotient rule aspect, and this is equal to one fourth. So that's how we know that these are equal to each other. So f prime g minus f g prime all over g squared plug two into the derivative. I get one fourth. So I know that this notation uh, and this value can be equal can be set equivalent to each other because they're both g prime of two coming from two different uh, aspects. Yeah. Seth, if so adding one to the x because it started a different value. So wouldn't that be um, under the sigma we would have to start two if you add one to n?
The reason why we don't do that is because when you find the derivative, that first term is going to drop out because that constant goes to zero. And so, yes, you can start at two, but then that means uh, your first term is going to be zero. I think you can start at well. So there's like there's like two like shifting things going on, right? Um, and I think uh, uh, I think the easy answer to that is uh, whatever you build, just have to make sure that your rule can produce the terms that you want it to produce. Just test it out, right? So, so yeah, there's moving parts there. So, right, right. So, uh, but even with the derivative, you could start at zero, you could start at one, you could start at two, but just make sure your exponents are lined up in a way where you can test it out. Yeah. Okay, so that's a tough one. Um, that part C was um, was kind of a strange way of asking us to um, to play with those uh, ideas. So uh, let's go to page eleven and just continue working through. Uh, and I will uh, highlight the problem after you guys had a chance to try it. So our goal is uh, to get through um, ten through. Let's see, 11 through circle. 11 through 15. So question for part B of um, page 11. OK, so if it's undefined, why um, set them equal to zero? Right, so your slope is undefined. That means your denominator of your derivative is equal to zero, right? So it's, d, it's dy over dt over dx over dt, and that denominator portion is at dx over dt. Thank you. Calculator question A. Uh, yeah, this is calculator. Yeah. Anything that's one and two are going to be in the calculator section. So I don't have to show work for finding T. No, you don't. Okay. Oh, 
So that's what I was talking about. It's like, uh, where whenever it's like eight and negative eggs, it goes like repeating like back and forth and negative with positive. So why would that one like not be the same? This one here? Oh, well, why is this, yeah. why the size not changing again? Yeah. yeah. Because it's similar to the one that we want to make this repetition. So, for instance, if I had um, this, that, that's my, that's my uh, ratio. Yeah. And so if it was one of the one that says, my first term will be one, and then my next term will be three. I'm just going to multiply by positive. Positive, yeah. yeah. Now, if it was if it was like one over one plus x, then I would make this one over like one minus negative x. And that form, and then match that form, but then that would be the same so I'm just confused on how you see this function. And then just that's natural law of the ocean. Because it's in this form here, and I'm just taking that, but I mean, yes, they're saying that they're very close to it. So I'm still thinking this form here, I can take that negative one and put it into that negative one. We can put the x value. This is this natural law. See how negative one is my x. So I know it's kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to be the connection. I know, yeah. Yeah, that is right. Mm -hmm. If you provide a hitch for him, you so that it's still going to be down with it. Yeah, because all it takes for it to converge is if I have one over n to the I don't know. Or uh, let's say let's say if it was like one over right, let's say it's one over n point one, this will still converge. It's, is this is still approaching zero. Normally this wouldn't wouldn't be good enough, but for AST, as long as my non alternating portion is giving it's heading towards zero, that's enough for my series to converge. Despite the despite the like despite P, it's just trying to compare this to it's like this was actually like your two make the inner work and stuff. Yeah, so all this requires for my exponent is as long as my exponent is greater than zero, it will, it'll, the limit of that expression will go to zero. It'll, it'll pass it as t. But for this one, the pass a is t. My p has to be less than or equal to one. Yeah, anything more than one half is going to cause it to not just be because when p is one half, oh that gets it that gets that over one makes it one one over n this time. So right, right, right. And then less of that will be like one fourth, which is one over ten to the one half. Yeah. So anything that's causing that two p to be less than one is is going to cause it to that diverge. Okay. So. I feel like we're just asking for a value, so I guess don't have to 
Yeah, make it in the whole, just take a value to it. So that can go. Which you can say the way to this can also be three fiber to three. Or based on the calculated domains restricted. Or So your question is what? Um, but he said this equal to five or two. You can know that. Why not three five or two? Like, I don't know which one. So where cosine is zero, no change in right? It's not. Oh, it finishes at t equals nine. Yeah, so we want to find an earlier instance. So we just go after the first instance of the two. Three power two is, is down here already. Or, or well, if I said three power two, like in another problem equal like eight or something. Mm -hmm. Or like seven. So should I just like test all of them? Yeah, my instinct is that I'm always going to go up to the first instance that it shows us and then go from there. Um, but I don't know if there's a restriction that's causing us to look. Is you set it to equal pi here, yeah, so like that tells me that there's not really any restriction. But I think signs uh, remains from pi over to negative pi over two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the zero. Yeah, let me look at that. It does feel kind of arbitrary as to why I would choose these the numbers. Mm. Until the second like, clear, it's I'll probably just gonna test all of them. Yeah, yeah. Let me then look at that and we get back to it. For part two, oh, when t equals i would also work, but does it like not work because of the assumption that it's explicitly stated that it's at point e at time equals nine? Plug in nine, you get the fiber to it. So we got a table one more two. Yeah, so when t is when t is nine, that makes this zero, which is corresponding with dx dt equal to zero, which is also undefined. So it looks like at d, there's um, my slope is also undefined. That's yeah, it's not the fifth person. That's it's not time good. Perfect. It's like I said, it just won't work here. So no, it's. I need those earlier, so I want yeah. to just find the first instance. So I'm seeing people the same thing. Is that what this was being true? Yeah, it's not that it's true. I need to get 
chain. I'm not sure this is what you just asked, but um, maybe why do you not test three five over two here? Like, because like when I get that, I got nine, which is right there. So is that just like assumed it's zero or because like if it is right? So you know that it's a So you know that's that's too far in, right? You know that B is going to curve between zero and nine. Mm -hmm. So you want to test an earlier instance. He has to be left on that. Yeah. So yeah. I want to. Yeah. yeah. So. Have to get D plus three for one of these, so you know if it equals zero at the time, mm -hmm. you have to test the other one. So since they're multiplied together, you know, one equals zero, then one will like multiply with that zero. Or so mm -hmm. end up. I think I was just confirming. I just want to confirm that you're right. No, I didn't have to. Okay. Yeah, one is enough. Agent yeah, it's, 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 this is part So, like, so,
No.
Okay, so uh, tomorrow I'm going to check pages 11 through 15. And so hopefully we got um, a few problems and then just a few more to do uh, for homework. All right, don't get your phones. Oh, it's like wait, how does it work? I just kind of got a lot of lost. I don't know if you can find it. I don't know if you can find it. I don't know if you can find it. I I there was these two girls. Um, that's how they are. Fine. That one's this one. Yeah, it's bad. Oh, no. Look at it. Wait, there's no name. That's what they have. They have a room back. Yes. 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 Yes, the time the time so quick. Uh, I'm a problem too. Yeah, I'm going to say goodbye. As I go, you bring it in like five minutes. Then when you're the person who comes to the good six minutes. Yeah, it, there's always it's not really like it, there's always